1947, Ni the Osu Alata Manche formed the Anti-Inflation Campaign Committee in Accra to, in response to high prices of goods imported into the Gold Coast by foreign firms. The boycott had the slogan, We cannot buy, your prices are too high. This is present-day Opera Square. During the colonial era, this area was the commercial hub of Accra. At the time, a group of foreign trading companies formed a union called the Association of West African Merchants, simply referred to as AWAM. In 1948, the people of Ghana, then a British colony, had very little say in the political and economic life of the country. During World War II, large trading companies, almost all of which were owned by foreigners, increased the prices of scarce commodities to make more profits. These companies mainly sold European merchandise. Some notable shops at the time were UTC, which is Union Trading Company, and AG Leventis, located at the present site of the General Post Office. Others were UAC, or United African Company, and CFAO. This building is the original Kingsway, built in 1914. Some of these shops were run by Europeans, Lebanese, Syrians and Indian merchants. They fixed and maintained uniform prices for all the goods they sold. So whichever shop one went to, the prices were the same. These are some of the items those shops were selling at the time. The boycott was against the way the white man was treating the Africans. Near Kwabuna Boni, the Osu Alata Manche is credited for rallying the masses with his anti-inflation campaign, which he personally financed. Who was Niboni? And why was he called Boycott Hini? GBC 24 visited the palace of New Kwabnaboni in the heart of Osu, which has been preserved to date, although it lacks renovation. The caretaker of the facility, Ninoy, told the news team the role Niboni played in galvanizing chiefs across the country to join the boycott. Niboni became known as Boycott Hene because he took the whites in order to force down prices of goods. He traversed the length and breadth of the country with his message, which resonated with other chiefs. The senior citizen, Mrs. Jerofin Taki, recounted some of the events of 1948. At that time, we were at uh, uh, Swalaba. It was interior of the of the town, and most of the things happened from Bartholomew. Now, you, you, where you call uh, 28 February Road, going to post office, most of the things started from there. So, uh, somewhere around that area, Opera Square, and behind, you know, behind Opera, it was a uh, they have uh, Bartholomew, UAC, big uh, PZ, and big stores over there. So all the agitation started from there. And then before it started, it extended to post office, then spread to opera, and before it went ahead to other places. The peak of the boycott coincided with a peaceful march by some ex-service men to the Christian Bok Castle at Osu, the residence of the then colonial governor. The old soldiers who had fought alongside the British troops during the World War II were going to present a petition to the governor over their unpaid pension, but were stopped by the police. The Ga traditional drama troupe re-enacted the crossroads shooting in which the British superintendent, Colin Emery, personally shot and killed three ex-service men and wounded some others. <laughs> Ah! 
These are bats of the three fallen heroes, Sergeant Ajeti, Corporal Atipo, and Private Odate Lamte. The name Ni Kwabina Boni, the Osu Alata Manche, will forever be remembered in the history of Ghana for the notable role he played in Ghana's independence struggle.